Adam Turner, North West Wales Green Party. <laughs> Hello, conference. Um, existing green policy already supports new high-speed rail in principle, and this motion adds crucial strategic detail relating specifically to the Midlands and here in the North. Here in Manchester today is the right place and the right time for this debate. HS2 between London and Birmingham is well underway, but the northern legs of the railway are in serious doubt. As a result, the National Audit Office has said that train fares in the north will have to surge to avoid dangerous overcrowding, even in the midst of a climate emergency. The news about high affairs has impacted me personally. I live in North Wales and regularly use the West Coast Main Line to visit my mum in the Midlands. Her care needs are becoming more complex with every passing year, so not visiting her in the future is not an option. I'd like the greenest option, the train, to become the cheapest, quickest and easiest option. Our current transport system forces millions of people into flying or driving every day, so let's change it with this strategy. The laws are passed, the land has been bought, and the climate cannot afford any further delay. Now, I'm a charter town planner, and I do think we should travel less. Every net zero report I've read says the same thing. The same reports also say that we need to increase travel by rail even as we reduce travel overall. This is also the Green Party position. How we travel is just as important as how much. To produce this motion and its three amendments, myself and others have gratefully consulted with party members and NGOs such as the Wildlife Trust. I'm pleased to announce that the transport spokesperson, the previous convener of the Transport Policy Working Group, the Wales Green Party leader, the Wales Green Party deputy leader and co-leader, Carla Denya MP and the Young Greens all support this strategy. In fact, I know Carla has prepared a speech in favour, which we may hear at the chair's discretion, of course. This motion does not vindicate the actions of HS2 Limited, and I've got to acknowledge the pain that folks further south will have experienced. You have 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. But in 2024, we're at the point where we're bearing all of that pain, and we do need to maximise the gain. So let's counter the threat from Tory, sorry, Labour austerity. <laughs> As Greens, we do not accept the anti-investment argument anyway, especially when it comes to the Midlands and the North. Let's send a mass message from Manchester today. If this could be your final sentence. Thank you. Well, I I'll say the message in really concisely, real hope, real trains. Let's invest in a green rail strategy. Thank you, conference. Thank you, Adam. Hello, conference. Emma Garnett, Oxfordshire Green Party. For anyone who is interested, all three amendments and the motion, both amended and unamended, did all pass uh, at workshop. Uh, but now on to amendment one. Please vote for this friendly amendment. I'm a university researcher in sustainability with a background in ecology and biodiversity conservation. I visited an HS2 construction site last year and have heard from people impacted. I saw which parts of habitat restoration are going well and areas uh, that contractors could be doing much better. After Spring Conference 2023, Adam, others and, um, and I sought feedback from other Greens and also engaged with the Woodlands Trust, Wildlife Trusts and Greens Against HS2 campaign materials. This amendment is the result of that work. It holds HS2 limited to account so that the mistakes of the past aren't repeated. We completely agree with a number of the Wildlife Trust recommendations and have incorporated them directly into this amendment, including that HS2 limited use up-to-date biodiversity metrics and secure a 10% biodiversity net gain your where final possible. Sentence, Emma. So, sorry? This be your final sentence. Oh, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> Um, I, su no, <laughs> uh, I support uh, the main motion and this amendment. There must be no uncritical endorsement. Such projects, high-speed rail projects, should be scrutinised and challenged by communities. This amendment adds this to the motion. It embeds green values and accountability, and I urge you to vote for it. Thank you very much, conference. Thank you for your contribution, Emma. This amendment 
says that phase one of HS2 between London and Birmingham is well under construction. That is debatable. It then says, although its implication, implementation has had significant ecological impacts, the austerity and mismanagement which have prolonged these impacts must end. The only thing in the UK today that has had no austerity is HS2. It is all about money. It is nothing about trains. What is happening with HS2 is they are now 39% of the 22 billion annual hole in the public accounts. We need to cancel HS2. We cannot show support for it. It is a hundred million pounds every four days, six hours. Think what that money could be used for. And where it's going at the moment is construction firms like Kia, Lang O'Rourke, Mor Morgan Sindel, sentence. Balfour BT. They all have huge defence contracts. Are we really going to support this type of company with this amount of much needed public money? This amendment says that the party's support for high-speed rail in could practice wrap up, please, Sarah. is contingent on aligning with green values. There's no green values here. Please do not be fooled. We've lived with this for 14 years. Phase one is only due to finish in 2030. Three. They want this money I'm going to, to ask that you wrap up now, please, Thank Sarah. You. Thank you. OK, thank you for your contribution. Hello, everyone. Hello, conference. Sam Easterby-Smith, Manchester Green Party. I live in South Manchester. The planned route of HS2 Phase 2 runs underneath my back garden. I stand to be directly affected by the construction of this line if it does go ahead. And so do my neighbours. So does my community. The essential thing about this, sorry, it's essential that if we as a nation are to do transport properly, to decarbonise transport, to achieve modal shift, we must do it right. But that doesn't mean we should let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And it does mean that we must bring our communities with us and make sure that, pe that residents affected <coughs> are duly compensated, adequately communicated with. This is your final sentence. Sir. Thank you. The track record of HS2 Limited, a, ho a company wholly owned by the Department of Transport, has been patchy. We need to push them to do better, but we need to do it. Thank you for your contribution, Sam. Uh, hello, conference. Uh, Mark here, Chiltern Green Party. Um, this uh, amendment talks about uh, we need to uh, um, uh, independently verify and scrutinise HS2. That's what myself and Joe and Sarah and innumerable uh, people have been doing for the last six years. And actually, we've been getting jeered at by the people who have proposed this motion. It is too late for any further uh, scrutiny because the, the works are already underway and all the uh, paperwork and all the uh, acts and bills are in place and written out. You cannot redo all those surveys and then say that uh, without delaying the project in, immeasurably, so you're not going to get the uh, independent oversight that you are claiming in this uh, amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for your contribution and for keeping very nicely to time. Okay, thank you. We now have that information. So the vote was four online, 82 members voted for that amendment, 38 against, and it was overwhelmingly carried in the room also. So amendment A1 to E01 has passed. Thank you for your patience there. We should be wired up a little bit more for the next amendment. With that in mind, we will now look at amendment A2 to E01. Thank you. Um, Matt Edwards, Bradford Green Party, and I am the Green Party Transport and Healthy, Healthy Streets spokesperson. Um, I'm here to ask you to support the amendment, and while I'm here, the, the motion as a whole. Um, so, I mean, just want for you to think of who came to Manchester on the train. I, can I know how much joy you've had experiencing that. 
Um, Manchester, like many cities in the north of England, is poorly served by rail. Um, so you have the solution, just put on more trains. Um, but it's not that simple. Rail lines through Manchester are some of the most congested structures of rail in the UK. Across the Pennines, Leeds, the other place I have to deal with today, um, the similar situation. Delays to local services in both of those cities can affect services across the country from Glasgow to Penzance. In both cities, the rail stations are full and the lines around them are at capacity. Capacity really does matter and that is what this amendment is, about, um, is trying to strengthen. One of the key objectives of, um, of high-speed rail is to separate those important long-distance services from the equally important but slower local stopping services, freeing up more space for more trains. Um, but we, we can't stop with HS2. This amendment... Make um, this and your the, final sentence, Mark. And the amendment um, uh, looks to strengthen something for me which is more important, Northern How Powerhouse Rail. Did you say last sentence? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely vital the Green Party has a loud, confident voice calling for high-speed rail and holding Labour to account on this. At the moment, the current policy doesn't allow me, as your transport spokesperson, or our leaders to do that. By passing, helping pass, passing this amendment and this motion, you're helping me um, to, do my, to do my job better, standing up for decarbonising transport. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Matt. Thank you, Conference. Uh, Rich McCarthy, Cheshire East Green Party. I think this amendment is a kind of a greenwash of the whole um, of the whole proposition. Uh, I live in Cheshire East. We have members of the party who will be entirely surrounded by HS2, so they will not be able to leave their community without having to tunnel underneath HS2 or bridge over the top of HS2. We have um, people. Every I, I live really close to Crewe, but if I want to go to Manchester or London, then I will probably have to get, I'll probably have to use my car to drive. I live next to a train station where I can go to Crewe at the moment, but to transport, to go further, I'll be much more likely to have to use a bus from Crewe train station to get to the link to the HS2 line to then get to Manchester or, or to London or Birmingham. Um, there's every likelihood that the more local trains will be substituted for trains transporting bulk goods. Um, this could be your last sentence. Etc. Et so all of this is lovely and actually is in Green Party policy anyway, I thought, but it's HS2 will not help any of these things. And passing this will just make people think it will. Thank you for your contribution. Okay, that voting is closed. So amendment two to EO1 in the online vote. There were uh, 76 votes just disappeared from my screen. It was in favour. I will relay the numbers as soon as it reappears. <laughs> but it was in favour online. So 76 votes in favour and 35 against on Amendment 2. And it was overwhelmingly in favour in the room as well. So Amendment 2 to EO1 does pass. Afternoon conference. Anthony Slaughter, Cardiff Green Party. This is a very self-explanatory amendment, which I hope the conference will support. It's about fair funding for Wales. At the moment, Wales has been shortchanged by at least £5 billion for the farcical reason that the government has declared HS2 an England and Wales project and not an inch of rail is going into Wales. It doesn't benefit Wales in any way. So supporting this motion is supporting fair funding for Wales, natural justice. I would also like to put in some context, there was a motion to the Senate last year so overwhelming supported by all parties in the Senate, including the Conservatives, backing this exact proposal. We've heard a lot in this conference about our electoral chances in Wales. If the Green Party rejects this amendment, myself and other Welsh, Welsh spokespeople will spend a lot of waste, waste a lot of media time trying to explain why we've done that. So please I urge you to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you for your contributions and for your brevity. Um, it's very appreciated. Just Lee, Hillingdon Green Party. Um, I'm hoping this isn't going to be a Graham, the Greyhound moment, but I'm doing my best. Now, this motion specifically asks for the funding that has been given to HS2, which has not benefited any of the places through which this railway goes, to cause extra money to go to Wales. I don't mind extra money to go into Wales, but People in Wales have advocated that HS2 is a benefit to Wales, so I don't think it's actually reasonable to say this. Also, I'd like to say that it's not the only means to look after your aged parent to support HS2. 
I have a mother who's 104. I also have a husband who is not in a very good state of health. And I've given years to opposing HS2 because of the harm it does. I brought my mother to live in my house and I've supported her. And my mother on the wheelchair tandem has visited the HS2 camps to show her support for people who are doing their best and trying to save nature. If my mother- your final sentence, just thank Okay, you. my mother has also seen Heathrow Airport built on the land where her grandfather and she herself as a child lived and motorways ripping up most of that countryside. So actually, it's a, it, it, this, way, this one doesn't make sense. Thank so you, getting Jess, money you for Wales wrap from up it. Now. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. That vote has now closed. So Amendment 3 to E01 was carried online and also in the room. So Amendment A3 to E01 has passed with 83 votes in favour and 26 against online and overwhelmingly carried in the room. Thank you very much, Conference. Hi, thank you. Thank Amanda you. Amanga from Cheshire East Green Party. In the manifesto, uh, we couldn't afford to do a whole load of things. For instance, universal basic income. We shouldn't be writing a blank cheque for HS2 to pay for corporate greed for a scheme which is not bringing benefits today in HS1. How can we say that HS2 is suddenly going to be skipping along through green fields? HS1 is the only evidence we've got, sorry, the beginnings of HS2 is the only evidence we've got of how HS2 would proceed if it was extended. The evidence is not great. I urge you to vote against writing a blank check on this motion. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Amanda. Hello, I'm Akua Bayunu, Manchester Green Party. Public transport is an environmental, racial and social justice issue. Lower income households are less likely to own a car. Road building, pollution, congestion and traffic accidents disproportionately affect working class people and people of colour. Hume Ward, where I served as a Green Councillor, has some of the poorest air quality in Manchester, which already fails World Health Organisation guidelines on air pollution levels. Across the north, access to employment and educational opportunity is severely curtailed by the lack of an environmentally efficient train network. I'm really aware of how little time I have. Um, let us be a party for the whole of this country that recognises the inequalities that currently exist between the North, the South and Wales and address that inequality as our priority. Vote for the reinstatement of HS2. And finally, if you're not already convinced, let me share an example from the freedom struggles of colonised people of Africa. When Europe was forced to withdraw from the west of Africa, the damage they did to the infrastructure of the countries is legendary. The removal of every light bulb, of every blueprint to the hot cities, burning the maps to the sewage networks and road traffic management systems. But the one that really burns are the bribes that were paid by one well-known German luxury car manufacturer to win the contract to provide fleets of buses to a country or countries without roads on the condition that the country ripped up its existing rail network. Check out Walter Watt Rodney's How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Let us not underdevelop the North. Please vote for this motion. Thank you, Akua, for your contributions. Joe Rukin, Warwick District Green Party. Conference, this motion is a battle for the very soul of the Green Party. Because if the Green Party is going to back the most environmentally destructive project this century, which saw hundreds of nature protectors in tunnels and tree houses, who have helped save 200 miles of habitats and woodlands and wetlands on phase two from wanton destruction, then what is the point of the Green Party? In 2011, this conference voted to oppose HS2, predicting the environmental impact would be too great, that the carbon case didn't stack up, and that HS2 would suck up the entire transport infrastructure budget, meaning that better projects got cancelled. And it's all turned out to be worse than that. Yet as an evidence-based party, which almost unanimously agreed last year that HS2 had been mismanaged. We're all now meant to ignore that evidence, evidence that the chair of the rail freight group 
said that HS2 was rampant with fraud. Evidence that Parliament was deliberately lied to about the cost of HS2 during a vote. Evidence that parliamentary watchdogs have found HS2 guilty of maladministration, having a culture of misinformation and showing complete disregard to the public. More evidence is that whistleblowers were sacked for refusing to hide costs. Hundreds others silenced with NDAs and payoffs. Water courses have been polluted. Farmers have had their land stolen. The environmental destruction of hedgerows has been off the scale with hundreds of miles of habitats destroyed that were never in the environmental statement. Nature protesters are now subject to the largest anti-protest injunction in the country. If you could start your With one of our tunnellers please. and Green Party member, Larch Maxi, being jailed for three years on Friday for a, over a JSO tunnel. And you'll be able to see more of this evidence in Panorama next Monday. That's week Monday. Now, and uh, we've seen I'm all going to ask you to wrap up, please. A Sorry, scandal. Two minutes, one sentence. And we've seen all that. This is a scandal akin to PPE, the post office, a blood scandal. And now, now we are going to put our integrity and our reputation on the line to provide the construction industry boondoggle with the ultimate greenwash, the Green Party seal of approval. That's not what the Green Party is about. Thank you for your contribution, Jane. Thank you, Conference. Kate Fenn, Sheffield Green Party. I live a mile away from the original eastern leg of HS2. I moved to Sheffield 20 years ago to study at Sheffield Hallam University. Since then, I have spent countless hours on trains for work to see family in the southeast. I've endured bus replacements, overcrowding, diversions. During the West Coast mainline upgrade 20 years ago, I even went from Reading to Sheffield via Bristol, stretching the conditions of an any route permitted ticket to its limits. While I had so much time on my hands, I started following the development of high speed rail in the UK. Being stuck on a train for five hours was worth it if things were getting better. Flash forward to the present, it is dispiriting to be waiting for the same on the same platform for the same trains to run along the same tracks with the same problems 20 years later. The West Coast Main Line is once again creaking at the seams. What was it all for? Tory cuts will now mean that no new infrastructure for the North. The cramped, overcrowded, smelly cross-country Voyager trains are now being refurbished to carry too many people for another 20 years. So now I turn to the young people in the audience who overwhelmingly rely on public transport to get around with a warning. It took 20 years to get this far with the modernization that they promised my generation. No credible alternative to HS2 exists. When it takes 20 years to plan and build a new railway, it means another generation stuck on an overcrowded cross-country Voyager train. So please vote yes on E01 for a new mainline railway in the north. Vote for a modern railway just like they have in France, Germany, Spain and Italy. Vote for investment outside of the southeast and vote for trains, not planes. Trust me when I say there is nothing else on the table for a generation or more. Thank you, Conference. Thank you for your contribution, Katie. Natalie Bennett, Sheffield Green Party, and thank you, Chair. Um, I was actually minded to uh, call for a motion to refer back, but given that has not been an option, and I entirely understand that's the chair's right, I'm going to speak and ask you all to vote against motion E01. Uh, I've had long time views, and I know there are many first time mem people at first time at conference, relatively new members. Many people have been campaigning against the disaster that is HS2 for many years. Um, the Green Party, when we debated this at length, decided this was a misconceived project that was at great risk of being mismanaged and turning into an environmental and financial disaster. That is what's happened. But I'm going to ask you to vote against E01 because of a question of process, a question of how we make political decisions. There is no briefing paper attached to this document. There is I don't know what the best thing to do about HS2 is now, uh, given um, we've got an enormous amount of destruction between Old Oak Common and an enormous amount of construction between Old Oak Common and Birmingham. What do we do with that bit? What do we do between Old Oak Common and Euston? 
what do we do with further north? And I would stress that there is, I don't think there is anything we need to pass to encourage support, show Green Party backing for Northern Rail. That's already there and Green Party councillors and representatives are already speaking about that. We don't need any motion on that area. But we don't have any evidence put before us to make a judgment to know what the best thing to do about the chaotic mess that is HS2 that we are going to be hearing about in the Panorama program, as you heard earlier. We have these multinational construction companies that are just tearing us way through our countryside and building an enormous gravy train, because that is what HS2 is. So conference, I wanted this referred back. I wanted this to go to our policy working sentence. groups, transport, economy, and land use to make a judgment to have evidence put before conference so we could make judgment. We don't have that evidence. We're now having to make a decision today. So I would urge you to say, we believe in evidence-based politics. We have to vote against this motion and not give a blank check to HS2. Thank you, Natalie, for your contribution. Adam Turner, North West Wales Green Party. I'm already daunted about correcting Natalie on something, but help. Um, the party did come to a view on HS2 in 2011, but it is now 2024. Clearly, the facts on the grounds have changed. Um, to correct Natalie again, I'm sorry, but we do not have a rail strategy for the North at the moment, and we really, really need one. Um, I do actually want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the pain of the member whose mum campaigned against Heathrow. I've campaigned against airport expansion as well. In fact, I think I'm campaigning against airport expansion right now. Um, I want to repeat my acknowledgement of the pain of members further south, but again reiterate this is about the Midlands and the North. The money from HS2 is capital investment and does not come from day-to-day -day spending, and it will also result in economic uplift again in the Midlands and the North. Um, I'd argue about the fact that it's the most environmentally destructive project in the country because it is needed to decarbonise our transport system and habitats from Australia to the Arctic will be under threat if we don't do this. We are not ignoring that HS2 has been mismanaged and in fact Greens for HS2, I'm a member, supported the joint motion last year to hold HS2 limited to account. And in that sense, this motion is not a blank check. In fact, we will have the strongest policy of any party that deals with the reality of HS2 going ahead and holding HS2 limited to account if, you if we pass this motion point, as amended. It is not too late for further scrutiny. In fact, this motion allows our MPs and spokespeople to carry out that scrutiny. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for your contribution. OK, thank you very much, conference. And when we're ready, I'll just announce the numbers. Um, so what I have done is take the information from those who have counted in the room and the clicks and the information of the vote online, which I announced earlier. So those numbers have remained the same. So the vote was 287 members voted in favour, 226 voted against. Therefore, E1 does carry. OK, there are 10 members who do want a card vote. Yeah. So the card vote result for EO1 was 345 votes in favour and 318 against. So after that card vote, EO1 also carries. So that's to let you know the outcome of that card vote.